Hello students. In this video, we will start with the chapter cell and cell organelles. Now, do you know how many types of cells are found in living organisms? Now, cells are of two main types. That is, they can be either prokaryotic cells or they can be eukaryotic cells. If they are eukaryotic cells, then these can be either in plant cell or in animal cells. Now, how can you observe this cell? So, to observe a cell, we require a microscope. We require a compound microscope to observe the details in cell, that they, what is present in the cell, what things are there in the cell. Now, you must be thinking, what is cell? A cell is the structural and the function unit of the living organism. Our body is made up of cell. Plant's body is made up of cells. Cells are of different sizes, they are of different structures based on their function. Also, they perform the function in our body. There are different types of organelles are present in the cell which perform different types of function. They form every organ in the body. Now, you all must have heard about the plant cell and animal cell. Now, plant cell, it is present in the plants, all the cells combine and the plant's body is formed. Now, if we will see under the microscope, we will find that there are various organelles which are present. So, first of all, we have a cell wall which is present. Then we have a cell membrane which is present. Now, the main difference between the plant cell and the animal cell is that in the animal cell, we do not have cell wall. Here, if you will see, the cell wall is absent. But in plant cell, the cell wall is present. Cell membrane is present in both plant cell also and in animal cell also. Now, inside here in this part, the empty space which we have, here thing which is present that is called a cytoplasm. So, now cytoplasm is present both in plant cell also and in animal cell also. Then, we have different organelles which are present in plant cell and animal cell. The most important organelle is the nucleus. So, the nucleus inside which we have our DNA or we can say the chromosomes are also present here only. So, we have the nucleus inside which we have nucleolus. That is, inside this only we will have our chromosomes and the DNA. So, here we have the nucleus in plant cell. Also, we have the nucleus. Here you can find the nucleus and the nucleus is present. Now, around the nucleus and the nucleolus, we have endoplasmic reticulum. So, now endoplasmic reticulum can be of two types, rough endoplasmic reticulum or smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Both are present in plant cell also and in animal cell also. Then we have different organelles like we have mitochondria present in both. Then we have Golgi bodies which are present in both. Then we have the lysosomes which are present in both. Okay. Then we also have vacuum. Now, one difference you must be seeing that here if you will see the vacuum is very big. Okay. And here if you will see the vacuum is very small. So, this is the main difference that here most of the space is occupied by the vacuum. And here very small minute vacuums are present. So, only two main differences there in between the plant cell and the animal cell. Now, there are other things also. Now, another main difference is that in the plant cell, we have the presence of chloroplast. Now, here you can see the chloroplast. Now, the green color to the plant is given because of this chloroplast. In animal cell, this chloroplast is absent because we cannot perform our own uh, food. We cannot prepare our own food. We cannot perform photosynthesis. So, that is the reason we do not have chloroplast. So, three main difference. First of all, cell wall is present in plant cell. Cell wall is absent in animal cell. We have what? A larger vacuole in the plant cell. Small vacuoles are present in the animal cell. Chloroplast is present in the plant cell. Chloroplast is absent in the animal cell. And then we have different organelles. Now we will be taking one one organelle and we will be studying about each organelle in detail. Let us look at the first cell organelle that is the cell wall. Now cell wall is what? Present in plant cell only. Now, cell wall, how is the structure? It is elastic and it is a strong coat. It helps like a coat. Also, it is composed. Now, how it is made up of? So, it is made up of carbohydrates like cellulose and pectin. And it is also made up of polymers like lignin, 
cutane as it is needed according to the different types of plant it changes the, the cell wall is also present in fungi also now what is the function of the cell wall what you can you say what can be the function of the wall which is around something so why walls are made first of all it is made to support so the cell wall is present to give support to the cell to protect the cell and also a very very important thing that it prevents the entry of the excessive water in the cell and these cell walls are present around the cells of algae of fungi and of plants it is absent in animals the second component of cell is the plasma membrane or you can also call it as cell membrane now the plasma membrane or the cell membrane it is very thin fragile and it is elastic it is like a covering which is present around the cell now what is it made up of so it is made up of protein molecules which are embedded in two layers so there are two layers of phospholipids also the function now what can be the function as it is made up of elastic it is thin it is fragile so it is usually for the selectively permeable membrane which is useful for molecules of water salt and oxygen to enter into the cells so it is like a membrane it is like a sieve which helps the entry of water salt and oxygen and it also do not allow the unwanted substance to enter into the cell so unwanted substance cannot enter into the cells also from inside the cell whatever things which are not required it also exits the cell through this plasma membrane only so it in short it maintains homeostasis and it is present in all types of cell it is present in plant cell it is present in animal cell so in all the cells we have the plasma membrane now here you can see that the plasma membrane the molecules which are there in it that is the protein molecules there are carbohydrate chain also in it and it, this chain that is it is made up of two layers in between you can find the two layers lipid bilayer is there that is called as the two layers of phospholipids now you may think how do substance travel in the cell so substance travel inside the cell by different processes such as diffusion and osmosis now here we will look at the two cellular activities now these activities that consume the cellular energy so first is endocytosis and second is exocytosis now what is endocytosis so the entry of some substance into the cell from outer environment when the substance from the outer environment is coming inside the cell it is coming inside so that is why it is called as endocytosis and what will be the exocytosis the opposite of endocytosis the removal or you can also say uh, the exit of the substances from inside the cell to the outer environment is so called as the exocytosis so cell ke andar jo bhi unwanted substance rahega that is removed in exo that means it is exited and then endocytosis means whatever things useful material is there that come inside the cell so this is the two main activities that consume the cellular energy first is the endocytosis and second is the exocytosis now next we have the processes that do not consume energy that is they do not consume the cellular energy so first is diffusion now what is diffusion it is the movement of molecules from region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration and this is the thing that is called as diffusion now liquid molecules or gaseous molecules like carbon dioxide or oxygen these things show diffusion from the higher concentration region they go to the lower concentration region this is nothing but the diffusion so here in the picture you can see from the two regions here the upper region is there and the lower region is there so from these two region this is the outer region this is the inside region so from this region here when the diffusion takes place so from this region this is higher concentration and this is lower concentration so when these smaller molecules they move from higher concentration to lower concentration this is called as diffusion now next is osmosis now osmosis for that you should know what is solvent what is solute and what is solution 
so we have solvent and solute in the solution okay now the movement of solute or solvent molecule that takes place through the semi permeable membrane is called as osmosis so for this you can easily take an example of raisin when you take a dry raisin and you keep that in water it will absorb all the water and if that raisin you keep outside in the sun it will lose all the water so this osmosis is based on that only the solute molecule always move from region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration and the solvent molecule move from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration and this process is called as osmosis water coming in and water leaving out whenever water come in from higher to lower or water come in from lower to higher that is all about in osmosis now here we have three types that is one is hypotonic isotonic and we have hypotonic let us first talk about the hypotonic solution so the concentration of water is lesser inside the cell than outside of the cell and this process is also endosmosis so hypotonic solution is one in which the concentration of solute is greater inside the cell than outside the cell so in hypotonic solution the water which is there it moves from outside to inside as inside the water is less so bahar se jitna water rahega it will come inside so such type is called as the hypotonic solution here also in plant cell you will see the water is coming inside so this is called as the hypotonic solution second we will talk about the isotonic solution now here the medium outside and the inside the cell they have the same proportion so whenever water will come in some amount will go out so here if you will see in isotonic solution both are balanced the outer medium is also balanced and the inner medium is also balanced water come in also and water goes out also here in plant cell also you will see water comes in and water goes out such type of solution is called as isotonic solution let us talk about the third type of solution that is hypotonic solution so now in hypotonic solution the concentration of water is greater inside so now the concentration of water should go more inside and it is greater inside than the outside of the cell so andar jo hai already bahut sara pani hai but it should leave so that is why it is called as hypotonic solution so hypotonic solution is one where the concentration of the solute is greater outside the cell than the inside the cell and this process is called as exosmosis that is water leaving the cell so here if you will see uh, in the your animal cell the water is leaving it is leaving and that is why this thing is shrinking so as it is leaving it is called as the exosmosis it is leaving here also you will see the water is leaving from inside it is going outside as inside we have lot of water so that is why from inside it is going outside such type of solution is called as the hypotonic solution so this is the three types of solution first was the hypotonic jisme se bahar se pani jo hai it came inside because inside the concentration was less next we have isotonic where both the mediums are balanced outside also water is equal and inside also water is equal third is called as the hypotonic solution when the water leaves the cell because inside we have enough amount of water so this water will leave the cell such type of solution is called as the hypotonic solution the third type of the cellular component is called as the cytoplasm now cytoplasm is present inside the cell now if you have to call cytoplasm and the nucleus together it is called as the protoplasm and cytoplasm and if you will exclude the cell organelles now inside the cytoplasm everything is present nucleus is present different types of cell organelles everything is present so when you exclude the cell organelles only cytoplasm is there then it is called as the cytosols now cytoplasm is the material which is bounded by the plasma membrane now many cell organelles and the nucleus are all present inside the cytoplasm because it is the base of the cell the cellular chemical reactions takes place in the cytoplasm it is like a membrane which uh, helps all the 
cell organelles to work properly. There are vital substances like amino acid, glucose, vitamins, all of these are present in the cytoplasm. Now, if we talk about the animal cell cytoplasm, it is more dense and it is more granular. And if we talk about plant cell cytoplasm, so in the plant cell, the cytoplasm is thin and usually it is pushed to the periphery with a large vacuole because we have a very large vacuole in the plant cell. So, in the plant cell, the cytoplasm is side and push because of the big vacuole. But in animal cell, it is spread evenly and it is more dense. Now, here you can see the a cytoplasm under the microscope. Now here it is seen under 40x. If you will use an electron microscope, we can also see the organelles. But here you can easily see that the cytoplasm is present, it is easily visible. We can also see the cell membranes are present and the nucleus is present. If you have to go in detail, if you have to even see the cell organelles, then we have to use the more power uh, microscope that is called as the electron microscope.